ya manguluka that is happening in Africa. Trade between Africans is almost non-existent. Angola, so rich in oil and other resources. The rest of southern countries import oil from the Middle East. Congo DRC, with the great Congo River, which could supply Africa with adequate electricity. What are we doing there? We are fighting. What happened to the great idea of the Inga hydropower project? All the idea of Dr. Nuyoma to tap water from the Congo River to the more dry southern African countries such as Namibia. Instead, we are fighting. Zimbabwe, the land came too little too late. But I'm happy that we got the land. We supposed to have grabbed the land in 1980 at independence and send the white boys home. But I'm happy that we have the land now. Namibia, in Namibia, Instead of changing the system that deprived our people from becoming rich, we renamed it and we gave it a new name, National Reconciliation, which literally means the rich becomes more richer and the poor becomes more poorer. Look at our new refound township, Choto, Kivukiland, Pfeifren, Axtelan, Ekutulatika, DRC and many more. Who lives there? Previously disadvantaged people. The wise and the rich live in Windhoek East and other places. And our land reform policy, so painful, slow, willing buyer, willing seller. I call it willing buyer, willing thief, because the seller determines the price on which we should buy back our stolen land. If our patience runs out, we are going to get it back the Zimbabwe way. South Africa. The story of South Africa is a funny one to me. Nelson Mandela, a hero of the struggle for freedom, jailed for 27 solid years at Robben Island. When he walked free and eventually took over as president in 1994, you know what he told the oppressors? You are free, you are forgiven. But now I see South Africa cannot forgive their own son. Julius Malema, what are his sins? A simple call for nationalization of mines and genuine empowerment of the South African people. What's the matter with us Africans? 
1945 marks the end of the Second World War. Since then, the Nazis were hunted, caught, tried, and jailed for life. But in Africa, we thank the oppressors. Thank you for long jail terms. Thank you for bad education. Thank you for poverty. Thank you for hunger. Thank you for ignorance. Thank you for civil war. Thank you for atrocities. What's the matter with us? Instead of showing the oppressors the door to hell, we show to them the door to paradise. So they can live and swim in the sea of wealth while our people live in abject poverty. Abject poverty in shacks. They can shoes until when? have a permanent representation at the United Nations Security Council, what are we doing about it? Nothing. And look at AU, the African Union. I do not understand the role of this organization. Little effort was done to prevent the killing of Mamal Gaddafi in Libya. Gaddafi was killed by the same imperialist who convened a meeting in 1884 in Berlin to divide Africa among themselves. But AU find it fit to allow these imperialists to fly over the African sky and kill one of their own. So to me, AU is a giant, but is a toothless giant. And look what we did to ourselves. We signed what is called International Criminal Court, who are prosecuted there, Africans. Who are jailed there? Africans. What's the matter with us Africans? Look at the case of Iraq. More people are dying now after the invasion of Americans there. I watch the TV, Al Jazeera or CNN. 150 people bombed to death in Baghdad. Who should be held responsible for this death? Of course the Americans. But George Bush is a free man. You know why? Because he did not sign the agreement of International Criminal Court. We have to learn. But the Americans are very funny people. Listen to Barack Obama. Yes, we can. I thought he means we can free Africans from poverty. No, he means yes, we can bomb them. He's the only person who entered the White House and take the Tom House and bomb his own race. Can you imagine George Bush taking the Tom House and the bomb the Buckingham Palace? No, it will never happen. And Hillary Clinton, she went all the way from America to Malawi to defend, among others, the rights of the so-called homosexuals. She was attacked by the African bees. To me, that is an indication that she is not welcome because her agenda is against African culture and norms. Those are Americans. But on the other hand, we Africans are also funny. We have so many people going to bed hungry. But instead of buying food, we buy weapons. And Africa does not own any factory of weapons. What's the matter with us Africans? Food has the high snatched. Ah, the problem with us, we don't have a system of our own. We use either the European or American or Chinese system. And talking about China, Chinese are good friends of Africa. They helped Africans to liberate themselves. But they should be treated with care. At the moment, we have Chinatowns in our cities and towns. Long before we realize it, we will have China villages in every African village. And in most countries, we import the wrong Chinese. Instead of bringing in the scientists and their machineries, we bring in these street Chinese who sell super glues, fake knives, and other false items, which will be broken before you reach home. And when you bring them back, all they say, China and stop giving them every tender that comes out. 
because they pay peanuts. What is this $300? Do they think this is a communist country? Or what? This is a country. <laughs> heroes, those of you who carry the interest of the nation at heart at all time, those of you who never indulge yourself in silly acts such as sex for marks or any other corruption activities it is a result of your hard work that we realize what we have achieved so far, schools were built, road networks were built, railway lines were built, hospitals clinics, electricity and clean water in rural areas our fisheries are well managed. The former plant combatants get their $50,000. And of course, education is being improved on. We have the Polytechnic of Namibia, University of Namibia. I like the idea of the School of Medicine, but the problems and the challenges remain. The question is, have we done enough? No. Can we do better? Yes. Our graduates are roaming the streets with their degrees but cannot find employment. Instead, they resort to drinking. I mean, go to Everin Street. You will find them in bars and shepins, drinking. And I think I know where the problem lies. Namibia is a unitary state with a separation of power based on the three pillars, executive, legislative, and the judiciary. But when I look at it, I don't see the separation of power. Because a person is a member of parliament, a person is a member of cabinet, a person is a member of Swapo Party Policy Bureau, a person is a member of Swapo Party Central Committee. You are a farmer, you are a headman. When do you get time to save in each office? And we are crying about unemployment. Unemployment, unemployment, and you have one person saving in seven positions? Too much power concentrated on one person. I thought the only people who should have too much power is four by four too much power. Not you. Ambassador Nkongo has got good ideas about this separation of power. I read his articles recently. And we deliberately send the youthful people to parliament to hammer on the issues of bread and butter. But instead, they concentrate on some laws such as the Stock Theft Act, where if you are caught stealing a coat, you are given more than 10 years in prison. But when you kill a person, the bail is set at 1,500 Namibia dollars. The life of human beings is so cheap. And what are they doing about our housing policy? So many of our people are living in shakes. And how did we come up with this code of shakes? Is it part of our national development plans? Surely it's not part of Swapo Party Manifesto. I hope Tom Arendo will shed some light on that one. Because how can you achieve Vision 2030 if you have so many people living in shakes? And our people do not understand what is BEE, -E, TESEF, NIF, or TPEG. All they want is empowerment and proper houses for themselves. By the way, where did we get this new fashion of cutting water, electricity, and the demolishing houses, kindergartens, using bulldozers, as if you were living under colonialism, and you choose winter to do your work? Is that not Nyamu's notes at work? I wonder. But let me remind you. Rural areas and shanty towns are our political capital. That is where we get our two-third majority for four consecutive terms. But after elections, we tend to forget about them. And when we cross the checkpoints of Oshifero and Murwani, we start to think about our big and air-conditioned offices. And by the time we reach Venduk, we are even whiter than whites. What's the matter with us? So our youthful lawmakers should make a change. And I'll call their names. Peyamu Sherenga, Evelyn Kavases, Utani Nuyoma, Elifas Tingara, Alpheus Muhewa, Juliet Kavetuna, Festus Weitele, Paulus Kapia. Paulus Kapia went back there by popular demand, but I don't hear him very much. Sarah Kuhongero Amadira, Pohamba Shifeta, 
Samuel Tifangama, Tweya Chekero, Tommy Nambahu, Lempi Lucas, Abraham Yambo, Tio Tierkal, and of course, Kadenambo, Kadenambo. I like Kadenambo, Kadenambo. I like his courage to be so frank, but I hate his agenda. His agenda is supposed to be that one of the ministry he leads, which is empowerment and development, genuine empowerment for our people, from Okangwati to Aroa, from Aroa to Okatana, from Okatana to Zipinda, in all 107 constituencies and 13 regions. The youth want empowerment, but my dear Karenambo Karenambo is pushing for a non youthric agenda, prostitution rights, and having a non Oshvambo speaking president to succeed Kapita Sholo. Does it matter what language the next president speaks? Succession debate should be about bread and butter issues or ideology. What is our ideology? Socialism, communism, or capitalism? And if you are capitalists, so please tell me so that I can become a capitalist. We are so